Now let's begin the lecture. First, let's talk about the issue of Tian Mu, or the Third Eye, or the Celestial Eye. In our cultivation community, a lot of people know that there are many supernormal powers that exist, especially when it comes to the question of whether we human beings can see the living beings and objects that exist in other dimensions. In society, these things are quite attractive to people. A lot of people are in strong pursuit of these things. Next, let us talk about what the Tian Mu is and what its structure is. The Tian Mu that we talk about. Actually, let me digress and first talk about the expression "other dimensions" or "other spaces," because this question involves things that tend to bring out different opinions among people. Some people may not really believe in them. So let's talk about how other dimensions are understood in the world of modern science. You know, the most common understanding is what people call a four-dimensional space. Of course, this four-dimensional space, as they understand it, is different from the spaces we are talking about. But after all, they're already doing research in this direction. One American scientist pointed out that it's not just a four-dimensional space. He believes there exists an eleven-dimensional space. A Soviet scientist has already definitively stated that, in his view, if the universe was created by the Big Bang, it's impossible that, in that instant, the explosion produced only a single time space. Very likely, there exist other time spaces. In his theory, on the basis of his research, he believes that there should be twenty-something different time spaces coexisting simultaneously. That is to say, it has already been definitively stated that, in addition to the physical dimension in which our present human society exists, there also exist other physical time spaces. That is to say, whichever time space you take, they are all materially existing. They are not hallucinations or ephemeral things or imaginary things. They are not like that. Of course, in our cultivation community, with regard to this issue, it is affirmative and clear. We believe that other dimensions do exist. Moreover, we see the forms of existence of these other dimensions very clearly. There are those kinds of dimensions that exist at the same time and at the same place, and there are also horizontal ones, vertical ones, and there are also many unitary paradises. So this whole universe possesses an extremely complex structure. It's not this image that we see now with our human flesh eyes. That is the vast expanse of the sky where there are countless galaxies and countless stars, just as simple as that. It's not like that. The structure of dimensions is very complex in and of itself. I can give you a specific example. Human beings all have a body, and this body is composed of countless flesh cells, and the cells are made by an arrangement. Of countless molecules, and the molecules in turn are made by an arrangement of countless atoms. And after the atomic nuclei undergo fission, inside there are countless electrons, atomic nuclei, neutrons. Going further downward, one gets to quarks and neutrinos. Of course, these are still very far from the most original matter, that is, the most microscopic matter, the primary origin of matter. Our present science is very far from it. To understand it would not be a matter of a short historical period. 
That is to say, we have not yet detected the smallest origin of matter. But from the currently understood state of things, we see that some substances, such as atomic nuclei or even quarks and neutrinos, are at the stage where it's completely impossible for us to examine them with a microscope. We only know of their existence from some special measurements, but can see nothing of their form of existence. But be that as it may, at present, scientists can examine molecules and atoms with a microscope. Think about it, everyone. Within the material dimension in which mankind lives, the largest substance we can see is a star, that is, other planets and stars, and the smallest we can see is a molecule. We live in between the stars, those large-scale substances, and the molecules. We think that this sky within this domain is extremely vast. But I'm telling everyone, haven't we now discovered that below molecules there are atoms? Then between molecules and atoms, it's also a very vast dimension. We think it's quite a... call it distant or call it immense. Of course, you cannot try to understand it from the standpoint of an ordinary person and from this environment. When you enter that dimension, you too will discover that it's also very large. Between the atoms and the atomic nuclei is also an extremely vast dimension. Going further downward, on every level there actually exists a dimension. Our present scientific means can only examine the order of arrangement of molecules, examine a molecule as a single point, examine the existence of an atom, examine it as a single point, but we cannot see its plane. If there were some kind of large telescope, a large microscope, a large instrument of this sort that could examine what the whole plane of atomic existence is like, what the whole plane of existence of atomic nuclei is like, what the plane of quarks is like, or what the whole plane of neutrinos is like, you would see the existence of other dimensions. The dimensions we are talking about, existing at the same place and at the same time, are actually like that. Let's take it a step deeper. In the Qigong community, we often say that man's true spirit, or Yuan Shen, does not become extinct. That is to say, people do not really die. Of course, in the past, there were some other ways of looking at it. Saying that man has a soul and such, isn't that superstition? Now, is the true spirit we're talking about the same as the soul that they're talking about? Well, we wouldn't quite say so, because what they were talking about is very vague. That is to say, a person's life will not disappear when the person dies. Why? If you look at it using supernormal powers, in the instant when a person dies, it's just that the layer of your largest cells made of molecules have been discarded. While your bodies made of atoms, atomic nuclei, neutrons, and going further down, have not been destroyed. It's just that they exist in other dimensions and you cannot examine them. They cannot be seen with the flesh eyes. So what you see that has died is nothing more than a person's body of flesh. Let me illustrate it for you a step further with an example. As physicists now know, the human body is made of cells which are formed by an arrangement of countless molecules, and the molecules, in turn, are composed of countless atoms. Think about it. These atoms. Making the atoms undergo fission requires a tremendously heavy mass and high-speed collision, right? That's what it takes. At the temperatures in a cremation furnace, it's impossible to make the atoms undergo fission, and it's impossible to destroy the atomic nuclei. Thus, that body has not been touched at all. If you could really make the atomic nuclei undergo fission, then I'd say that the person in the cremation furnace would be a nuclear explosion. I'd say he could destroy a city. Just that one person, his body has enough molecules to destroy things within a large area. So I'm telling everyone, from the scientific standpoint, all the atomic nuclei, the quarks, the neutrinos, and so on downwards, 
that exist in the human body have not been destroyed. It's just that your body in this present material space has decomposed. But actually it's also matter is conserved. If you were to decompose down to the tiniest, finest material composition, it still wouldn't disappear. On a very microscopic scale, we have seen that be it a person or what we call a vacuum, you know, a vacuum means there's nothing there, but actually a vacuum itself is matter. Because, as I said, going further down, the origin of matter is very far from what we can understand now. We've just talked about other dimensions. If other dimensions do exist, their forms of existence of time and space are very different from those of our dimension. That is to say, the composition of their time and their space is different. Then the living beings and substances in those spaces would definitely be different from the ones here. And the difference is enormous. So we say that opening Tianmu, or the third eye, we use man's other eye to pierce through our present physical dimension and directly see the form of existence of objects in other physical dimensions. That's what we mean by opening Tianmu. Then if it's opening Tianmu, where is this Tianmu? It's a body with a very complex structure. The main channel of Tiamu is just between the two eyebrows and then up a little, just above the point between the two eyebrows, right at this area on the forehead. Some people's are blocked. Some people's have a passage. Some people's passages are very irregular. Some are triangular, some are rectangular, they're all kinds. Through postnatal cultivation, it will be made very round. This Tianmu that we're talking about can also be explained from the viewpoint of modern science. In the past, it was said that when the Tianmu is open, you can see scenes from other dimensions. Don't people need to see things through their eyes? You don't have an eye here, aren't you talking idealistically? Actually, I'm telling you, this is not idealistic at all. This is scientific. This is not something overly mystical. I'll give you a specific example. We always thought that only things that human eyes can see really exist. That's what a lot of people think. I believe things that I see with my eyes, and I don't believe anything that I can't see with my own two eyes. Thus, we have always thought that such people have poor enlightenment quality. These kinds of people tend to become very narrow-minded, so they're hard to save. Because what a person's eyes see is precisely not the true picture of the universe, but only the form of existence within this physical dimension. But there are many, many forms of existence in other dimensions, and there are also many, many other dimensions, but all this has been completely blocked out by our pair of flesh eyes. This pair of flesh eyes just lets you see this physical dimension and it obstructs you from seeing other physical dimensions. Opening the Tianmu or third eye that we're talking about is bypassing this pair of eyes to avoid seeing through them and using other means to observe the reality of the universe. That's opening Tianmu. Just now I said the main passage of Tianmu is here. From a medical standpoint, we say, after the Tianmu is open, everyone knows that current medical science thinks that when one's eyes see objects, it's not the eyes themselves that directly reflect the image, they're just a tool. In order to see an object, a person or an object, to see its ex appearance, what it's wearing, its color, and what shape it is, that's actually all being reflected by the person's brain. That is to say, the things you see get transmitted through the eyes, through the optic nerve to the rear part of the human brain, to the pineal body area, the pineal body and the human brain. 
and then it gets reflected in this area. Actually, when people see something, it's inside the brain. It's the brain that's seeing. The eyes are nothing more than a tool, just like the lens of a camera or a movie camera. When it's very dark, the aperture enlarges. Otherwise, there would be insufficient exposure, and you wouldn't be able to capture anything in the picture. The human eye is the same. When a person enters a very dark place, the pupils immediately have to expand. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to see anything. When you go to a very bright place like outdoors, the pupils immediately have to contract, and the aperture of a camera or a movie camera also has to become smaller. If it doesn't, there would be overexposure. It would be black all across. You wouldn't be able to see anything. The human eye is like that too. When you go outside, the light dazzles your eyes, and you can't see objects, and the pupils immediately contract. If they don't contract fast enough, a person has to squint his eyes before he can see objects clearly. So the structure is very similar to that of the lens of a camera. A camera produces images on film. A movie camera produces the images on videotape. When a person sees an image, it's the brain that's reflecting the image. But it's precisely this pair of eyes that prevents a person from seeing the reality of the universe. So when people say, "I believe what I can see and I don't believe what I can't see," in the cultivation community, it's always been said that such a person has poor enlightenment quality, that he cannot be saved. That's the reason. No one could figure it out before. No one could explain it. Some people say, since we see in this way, when we observe through the tianmu, doesn't there still have to be some equipment, the existence of something with the structure of an eye, before one can see objects? Without this thing, it wouldn't work. Actually, it's not that we don't have an eye here. It's just that this eye is in another dimension. It exists in another time space, yet it can penetrate through to our dimension and to other dimensions. It's just that we can't observe it with our ordinary human flesh eyes. So it does have an eye there. You know the pineal body that we talk about. The practices of the Taoist school call the pineal body the Niwan Palace. People have always asked, "What is the Niwan Palace?" Actually, it's precisely man's pineal body. Its form of existence in another dimension is called the Niwan Palace. Of course, present-day science has already come to understand this. To open the Tianmu, which we're talking about, is to open this channel of yours. Right at the intersection, at this position, is the pineal body, allowing the pineal body to look out directly. That's what we call opening Tianmu and seeing objects with the pineal body. But I've just said, from a, a medical standpoint, if you don't have the equipment in the form of an eye, you won't be able to see. There is, in fact, an eye there. Medicine has already discovered from dissection that in the human brain, in front of the pineal body area, there exists an eye. They believe it's a vestigial eye. But its structure doesn't lack anything when compared with our external eyes. It's the same. So they think that in the past, man was supposed to have a third eye. But as he changed and evolved, this eye atrophied and went inside the human brain. That's what they think. Of course, that's their way of talking about it. Actually, we say that this eye just exists like that. Anyway, medical science has already come to recognize the existence of this eye. So we open the channel here and use this eye to see. So I think this fits in with what we say today in the cultivation community about seeing with Tianmu. I also said, of course, its structure isn't that simple. It's more complex. It's very complex. Because Tianmu isn't just one channel; it's an entire large system, an extremely complex system. It's connected to all the pores of your body. So in the past, there were some people who, after opening Tianmu, could see with their hands, with their belly, or even with their feet, or with the back of their head. The Tao school says that every aperture is an eye. They call acupoints apertures or chao. The Buddha school say that every pore is an eye. What they say is very reasonable. Of course, when you reach a high level in cultivation, you'll discover that this is so. One can look from all over. That is to say, after the temple has been opened, there has to be this kind of an eye. On the outside, there has to exist an eye. Only if you have this thing can you see. Without this eye, you won't be able to see. Thus, after opening the tianmu, some people only feel that it's blinding. They can't see anything. They just feel that the light is dazzling their eyes. 
It's just because they don't have this eye. But usually, under normal circumstances, everyone has this eye. Why? A lot of people, including our practitioners, can see. That's because, as I said, cultivation depends on oneself and gong or cultivation energy depends on the master. In addition to the Buddhas and the Tao school masters that we know about, there are also all kinds of immensely large matter in the universe, all of which possess great divine powers, and they can help you directly. They see that this person is good with his tianmu is open already, so maybe they'll evolve an eye for you to see with. For those who have a master, the master will directly evolve an eye for you so that you can see. So a lot of people have opened their tianmu and can see. That is because they have this eye. It's outside the outer layer of one skin and exists in another dimension. Of course, once after you have this eye and the passage has been opened, you won't necessarily see very clearly. There's also the issue of levels. Next, I'll talk about the issue of the level of one's tianmu. Why is it that some people see things this way while some people see things that way? Why is it that after opening tianmu, people all see things differently? That's because everyone's level is different, which also involves... The reason the levels are different is that people's inborn quality, or genji, is different. Because around this tianmu passage, there also exists a field in which there is a very quintessential substance. We can call it refined essence of qi. This thing is very precious. It is evolved out of the most precious matter within our de, or virtue, a white matter. After opening tianmu, people see differently because they have different amounts of refined essence of qi. If a person has preserved his refined essence of qi very well, after opening tianmu, he sees very clearly. If a person has very little of this refined essence of qi, after opening tianmu, he won't see clearly or even... For example, of the people sitting here, some people see light, some people see falun, some cannot see anything. Some people can see other living beings, some people can't see. Some people can see. Even the lights that some people see are different in color. That's because it's determined by your level. So why is it that every person is different? As I was just saying, it's because of the difference in inborn quality. Then specifically, how does it work? Because I just said, for true cultivation, one has to emphasize de or virtue. But as ordinary people, people as they have developed today have trouble knowing what's truly good and bad. Of course, when I say that, some people don't really believe it, saying, I'm very knowledgeable, I can't tell good from bad, what you're saying is practically insulting us. Actually, I'm telling you, just as I was saying yesterday, the moral standard of human society has fallen, has been warped. If someone were learning from Lei Feng today and acting like he did in his time, people would say that he's a fool, that it's inconceivable or they'd even laugh at him. That is, the moral standard has all been warped. The standards by which people judge have already changed. If you use the fallen standards to judge things, then I say you've deviated quite a bit because all of mankind is falling. But there is an immutable standard for judging good and bad, which is what I said yesterday, the cosmic principle of Jin Shan Ren, or truthfulness, benevolence, forbearance. It is unchanging. Judged by this standard, it would fall far short. So when some people have done something bad, if you tell them they're doing a bad deed, they don't even believe you. Not only nowadays, but since antiquity up until now, because people have fallen down here into delusion. Falling into delusion, into an already deluded society. Therefore, they cannot see the fundamental nature of matter, cannot see the reality of the universe. They think that many of the things that humans pursue and want to do are good things. In actuality, it's just the opposite. They're all bad. Our human society is precisely the opposite of that side. What you think is good is not necessarily good. What you think is bad is not necessarily bad. Everyone knows that as a human being, we are all loving and protective of our children, afraid that they'll feel cold or will catch a chill, even afraid that in the future, in society, they will be bullied and you want to teach them to become sharper and more clever. When you see money, you should pocket it. You should be such and such way. So stupid. Others bullied you. How come you didn't go to their parents or go to their teacher? 
Anyway, from the time they're little to the time they're older, these children are all educated this way. If this child, because he is born innately as a blank piece of paper, as you educate him this way, he will become more and more like an ordinary person and will fall into this big thigh vat of ordinary people. At that point, this little bit that's on his tiamu or third eye would be gradually lost, lost more and more. The more he becomes like the kind of person you have educated him to be, the more he loses. Oftentimes, there are some people who are always bullied in society. They themselves are bullied, but they themselves don't feel it's anything and don't even resist, nor do they have words of complaint and still often like to help others. But they are always maltreated. However, oftentimes, as soon as these kinds of people practice cultivation, they find that they develop gong very quickly. After their tim was opened, they see lots of things. People who don't harm others tend to be able to preserve these things somewhat better. This is someone who is disinterested in worldly affairs. Of course, nowadays these kinds of people can hardly reach the point of caring little about worldly affairs. They're just people who take personal interests a little more lightly. Maybe they have preserved more of these things, so when they open up, they can see very clearly. That is to say, this little bit of the refined essence of chi of humans is lost because one has done bad deeds, hurt others, hurt others for one's personal gain. Sometimes you think that this thing is yours, but actually it's not yours. Because it is unstable, so it's hard to tell whether or not money, fortune, or material items are actually yours. When you fight for them with others, when you get them through improper means or use some methods, you may, as a result, owe other people something, having taken other people's things. In that case, you need to give other people de or virtue to make up for it, and the refined essence of qi stored in your temple will also dissipate and be lost. Thus, children, oftentimes very young children, can see very clearly when their temple is open. As they become more and more able to understand the society and become more and more like our present-day ordinary people, then he will lose more and more of these things of his. Of course, this matter is not absolute. There are many people who are really not bad. People have always said, in the past, people who practice Gong would say, the master seeks a disciple, not a disciple seeks a master. That is, a master needs to select this kind of person. His de would be abundant, and the things he would have preserved would be very good. Just now I said, that is, those of you who have preserved a lot of the refined essence of qi will see very clearly. Those of you who have little of the refined essence of qi left will not see clearly. In addition, with just a little bit more of this refined essence of qi, with that tiny difference, the result differs a great deal. Therefore, it's very hard to find two people whose xing xing is about the same. So here in the lecture hall, as I say now, suppose there are a lot of people whose tim was open. To find two people who are on the same level and see everything the same way, is very difficult because it is determined by the level and this level is in turn directly controlled by the fa so it's the fa at different levels it also has different forms of expression thus on this level you can only see it like this on that level you can only see it like that so people who are very high level can see the truth. It actually was the case that in the past we had many Falun Gong disciples who in their practice thought that their own Tim was pretty good, so they flaunted themselves, telling people, you're possessed, you have this, you have that, such and such, right? I'm telling you, what you saw wasn't anything. Some things are transformed along with your thoughts. With some things, you cannot see their karmic relationship. You cannot see the true picture. What is spirit possession? Spirit possession and the messages you carry from your previous lifetime. Can you tell the difference? In reality, it's just those messages from your previous lifetime. So you said it was spirit possession, causing people to panic. Aren't you undermining the fa? We have said over and over again, don't use the tim or how many or how high the supernormal powers are to measure the height of a person's gong. Only by using the xing xing to measure whether a person is good or bad can one determine the height of a person's level. Many people are locked. Those with great de often times practice upwards locked, even locked up for a very long time. He has developed a lot of supernormal powers, but they've all been locked up for him, so he has nothing, which is to ensure that he doesn't develop attachments and will cultivate very high. Don't look at the fact that you've developed gong or that you can see very clearly. Other people are much, much more powerful than you are.
We do not delineate good and bad based on these things. Historically, it has also been this way. But it can confuse some people who have very strong attachments. They pursue these things, so they are very attached to these things. This is also an issue of inborn quality and an issue of enlightenment quality, Xing. Basically, what you can gain, whether or not you can cultivate, whether or not you can reach the goal, I say, is directly related to your pursuit. Just now, I talked about the issue of refined essence of qi, the issue of it determining a person's level. At the same time, we have another crucial issue that determines people's levels. Of course, just now, I said that practicing cultivation within the triple world, because cultivation practice is divided into a couple of major levels, in triple world fa cultivation practice and beyond triple world fa cultivation practice. In triple world cultivation practice is the process of practicing cultivation with the ordinary human flesh body. It's called in triple world fa cultivation practice, but it's different from the out of the secular world and entering the secular world in temples. We are now discussing it in the context of contemporary science of the human body. This is the division of the human body's two major levels. Beyond triple world fa cultivation practice is also called Buddhist fa cultivation practice and also called arhat fa cultivation practice. That's practicing cultivation with a body that has already been replaced by high energy matter. One would already have gained fruit status or gold. Wait, arhat status, but he still needs to endure suffering among ordinary people, to be tempered among ordinary people, so ordinary people cannot yet tell his true image. People whose temple level is very high can tell. Thus, after one has gone beyond the intraple world fire cultivation practice, there is still another issue involved. The level of the temple is also determined by another thing. These people have many, many eyes appearing on their faces. They are numerous to what extent? It has no limit. For those with the most, eyes are all over the face. For those with fewer, it's one here, one here, one here. Under normal circumstances, apart from the main passageway at the Sangin area, the Tao school calls it Shangin, that is, the root of the nose, this area, there is a secondary passageway, the main secondary passageway. Most people mainly see through this area. Between the two eyebrows below this eye, there exist all different secondary passageways of this eye. They are also factors that determine a person's level. Of course, there are more that can only be obtained when one has reached a rather high level. That we won't talk about because if I were to discuss it, you would not be able to accept it because your current cultivation practice is too far behind it. So those things won't be discussed. In the future, when you ascend up there, you'll know it all. Just now, I told everyone a bit about the structure of the Tianmu. Now I will talk about what phenomena exist when one opens the Tianmu by oneself. As everyone knows, during the Qigong practice in the past, a lot of people's Tianmu were open. Many people had different experiences in the process of opening the Tianmu. There are a few states that I will discuss with everyone. First, when opening the Tianmu, one feels that the forehead is bloated. It's uncomfortable. Please a- pay attention. As I'm talking about the temple structure, I'm opening the temple for everyone. For those who genuinely practice... For those who genuinely practice Falun Gong, practice cultivation in our Falun Dafa, and are truly practicing cultivation, for those who cannot let go of their illnesses, we still have to observe you and cannot guarantee it for these kinds of people. For those who truly practice cultivation in Dafa, everyone's will be opened. It must be open for you. Open thoroughly. As for whether you can see clearly or not, your personal factors are still at play. Of course, it's not to say that if I have less of this refined essence of tea, and when I have opened it, I cannot see clearly, then it's all over for me in this lifetime. That's not the way it is. Everyone knows that the Tao school talks about returning to one's own true self. That is, in the course of practicing cultivation, it will continually be repaired and compensated. When your own tea is being raised up, it will be compensated. Gradually, it will become more and more clear. This refined essence of qi will gradually be compensated. By the time you attain completion, or yuan man, it will also have been completely recovered. This situation will occur. When opening one's own tian mu, some people will feel that it's bloated and will feel nauseous. Such phenomena will occur. Actually, when we open tian mu now, these phenomena will also exist, but it won't be so serious. And some people, when opening the Tianmu, will, when their eyes are closed, see a deep tunnel like a well, completely dark, and inside is infinitely long, infinitely far.
There are other people who, when their eyes are closed, see a round black dot, right? This will, through his practice of gong, because he is practicing gong, the black dot will slowly turn white, turn into a white spot. So some people say, with my eyes closed, I saw the moon. They say they can see the moon. Gradually, this white spot will become brighter and brighter. Some people say, I can see the sun with my eyes closed. They feel it is very dazzling. Actually, you did not see the sun, nor did you see the moon. What you saw was this passageway, this passageway that I mentioned just now. And it's also this passageway of yours that's dazzling you. It's very bright. It's just that you don't have the external eye, so you cannot see objects. And people who have seen this passageway have not had it open fully, have not reached the very end of the passageway, so they cannot see yet. And there are other people who, when their temu is open, a kind of flower's blossoming state appears in the area of the forehead, like a flower, like when a flower suddenly blooms in a slow-motion shot on television or in a movie just like this, swoosh, it suddenly blossoms, opening layer by layer. There's no end as it opens, it opens every day. This state will appear. When one practices going on one's own, this will occur. Just now I was telling you about Tian Mu or the third eye. That's all for this because we can't spend too much time on it. That's what this long discussed Tian Mu is all about after all. And the structure of Tian Mu, I have explained it to you. So some people feel that the forehead is very itchy. Some people feel, the absolute majority of the people sitting here feel that the flesh in the location of Tian Mu is gathering upward, squeezing together and drilling inward. About 80% of the people, about 90% will have this feeling. Is what I'm saying correct? Is it so? The audience replies yes. It's the same for the people behind me, too. No area has been left out. Our students outside the lecture hall have not been left out either. Everybody will feel the flesh gathering and drilling in. It will be open for everyone. Actually, I'm using an external force, using gong to open it for you. Everyone's will be open, but for some people, after it's open, we'll install a door for you. So some of you will see, and then you won't be able to see anymore. That's because we installed a door for you, because you have it badly injured inside. We may have to repair it for you for a while before we can let you see again. Some people say will have to be locked for a while. Some people after having it opened, can't see clearly because too many of their own things have been lost. However, a great, a large number of, a lot of people are able to see the existence of objects that ordinary people cannot see with their eyes, or light, or lights of various colors. Human eyes cannot see. So if you saw, you saw it with the tianmu. Some people say, the teacher is sitting there, whether it's his halo or the light he emanates. I saw, but when I wanted to look more closely, it went away. A lot of people like this. Why? Because you're already used to using the human eyes to look. So when you want to look more closely, you've already used the eyes. When you see things unintentionally, it's seen through the ten moon. When you're looking at things, you don't necessarily have to look with your eyes closed. For some people, it's actually the same with the eyes open or eyes closed. It's just that they don't know how to use it. Next, let's talk about the two supernormal powers directly related to Tian Mu. One of them is called clairvoyance. It's directly related to our Tian Mu. What is clairvoyance? It's not like in front of you there's an object and you see it, be it with your eyes closed or through another object. But it's when an object or a person isn't present on site. He's in some faraway place. Or you'll hear he's in America or he's in Beijing. 
and you say you can see what he's doing. This supernormal power is one of the six supernormal powers recognized in the world. Clairvoyance. It is believed that it does exist. So what is this clairvoyance all about? Let me tell you about the situation. Nowadays, in the cultivation community, there exists an incorrect understanding that when a person emits qi or when a person can see something, he has such an ability to instantly penetrate so far or emit so far and see things that are far away. Actually, as an ordinary person or a person who practices qi, you don't have anything. You have no way whatsoever to see these things. In fact, even if you have a lot of accomplishments in the intriple world for cultivation and develop a lot of supernormal powers, you still don't have that ability. So how do you see it then? Actually, as I was saying yesterday, in each of the different dimensions, the human body has a different body and a different field existing simultaneously with it. In one special dimension, since there's a field for every one of the bodies, in one of those fields around your body, there exists the following phenomenon. Whatever there is in the universe, all the objects can be reflected into this field of yours. Just like a mirror, everything can be reflected into this field of yours. There's a sun outside, so maybe there's one reflected in your body too. But although it exists as a kind of reflection, you know, we say, although it's a reflection, it also exists physically. It's also matter. I'm telling everyone that the shadow formed beside you by light falling on your body is also matter. As science keeps on developing, this will be discovered in the future. That is to say, in one special dimension, your body has this field. And in this field, there is a special reaction such that everything can be reflected from the universe into this field. The clairvoyance we're talking about is in fact just that you've seen these images reflected from the universe into your field. It is a capability of the universe, not your own capability. It's refracted over here for you by the universe. It's actually this kind of situation. So the way the supernormal power exists is that in the special dimension, in the area of your forehead, there is a mirror. A non-practitioner's mirror faces himself. A practitioner's mirror will instantly turn around. When your power of clairvoyance comes out, this mirror will begin to flip constantly at that area of the forehead. Its frequency of flipping is very high. You know, when a projector is showing a movie faster than 24 frames per second, the movements appear continuous. The mirror's frequency of rotation is even higher than 24 revolutions per second. It's very rapid, so it reflects the objects you see, pa pa pa. After the picture is reflected onto the mirror, the mirror flips and lets you see it. As soon as it flips back, it erases it. Then it flips again, makes an imprint, and lets you see it. And then it flips back and erases it again. So it lets you see it like that over and over again. So the things that you see are continuous and linked. Thus, the things that are captured on this mirror are nothing more than the images that are reflected from the universe into your field. This is the clairvoyance we mentioned. So some people may say, those things reflected from the universe, what about what's in front of you and behind? you. This mirror is so small, it won't necessarily be able to capture everything around your body. Of course, this universe, it is said that cultivators see the universe as being mystical and wondrous, wondrous beyond words. So it's not as we may imagine, not as simple as how I explain it to you. I'm just telling you about it in general. If your Timu has made a breakthrough to a slightly higher level and you take a look, you see that your body existing in that dimension no longer exists. There exists only a mirror. This mirror is standing inside your dimension and flipping back and forth. So there isn't anything that it cannot capture and you can see whatever you want to see. Of course, there is the issue of supernormal powers being strengthened and substantiated by energy, which is a question of your level. If your supernormal powers are not that strong, if your level is not that high, you don't have that much energy and your supernormal powers cannot be strengthened by it that much. So you cannot see clearly and you won't be able to see that much.
That's the principle. So some people's supernormal powers are somewhat stronger. Some people's are somewhat weaker. Some people know how to use them. Some people don't know how to use them. This is the structure of the supernormal power of clairvoyance. I have made it known to you. Later on, I'll talk about some supernormal powers. We'll plant the following in almost every one of you. As long as you've come here to cultivate following, going to cultivate Dafa or the Great Law, Tiamu is the same for those who cultivate the Dafa. It's open for everyone. But for all the other supernormal powers I will talk about afterwards, that wouldn't do because they involve the issue of your cultivation, the issue of your level. If your level is high enough, they may develop as I'm talking about them. If your level is not high enough, they will not come out. They may emerge later as your level rises. But I have to make these principles known to everyone so that in your future cultivation you'll know what's going on. Next, let's talk about another supernormal power directly related to Tianmu. It is called the power of knowing fates, or precognition and retrocognition, or su ming tong. This supernormal power of knowing fates is one of the six supernormal powers recognized in the world. Didn't they believe in fatalism in the past? The power of knowing fates lets you know a person's future and a person's past. If it's a bit stronger, you can see the form of change of a society. If it's a bit stronger than that, you can see the form of change within a certain extent of the universe. That's the supernormal power of knowing fates that we're talking about. So what's the structure of this power of knowing fates? You know, all the supernormal powers... Many, many things of the magic arts that we develop through cultivation are directly related, directly linked to your dantian or lower abdomen area and to the following in your dantian position. So rising up from the dantian up to the knee one, then from the knee one a beam of light shoots out. Just like the projection beam in a movie screen forming something like a projection screen at the location of your forehead. Very much like the cathode ray screen of a TV. In the beginning, some people cannot see clearly and feel that it's flickering. Just like when a TV isn't tuned, there are lines and static flickering here and there on the screen. Once you tune it precisely, it will show images. It's very much like a TV, like the cathode ray screen of a TV. Once this thing works well, this person can watch it through... It can be watched with your eyes closed or watched with them open. When it's very strong, you can see it with your eyes open. It's all the same. When it's weak, you can only see it clearly with your eyes closed. So images will appear on it. It will show images. Just now I talked about the question of other time spaces. In other time spaces, there are other different forms of existence of our body. Just now, when we were talking about the supernormal power of knowing fates, I mentioned that it's possible to know a person's future and past. Some people would say, isn't this talking superstition? The future hasn't happened yet. How are you going to see it? Actually, I'm telling you, when a person is born, your whole life already simultaneously exists. Then there is another question here. Some people think that all our struggle and effort in our life are for nothing. Our Guangdong province is very wealthy now and everyone's doing business. Isn't this through our effort? This is caused by changes in celestial phenomena. You are a part of these celestial phenomena. It's an inevitable consequence. Maybe you don't believe what I say. Of course, there are some small fluctuations. Through personal effort, some small aspects can be changed. Why? Because if it were not possible to change small things through personal effort, the problem of man doing good and doing evil and creating karma or yeli would not exist. So by underhanded means he can harm other people and change some minor things in the course of his lifetime. But it's very hard for him to change major things. He is totally unable to do it. An ordinary person is unable to change the course of his life. You cannot change it at all. It can only be changed in two cases. One is that this person stops at no evil, hurting others and harming himself as though he's out of control. But what lies ahead of him is complete destruction and an end to his life. I don't think anybody will want to take this first road. Another road is that this person takes the path of cultivation practice. Because as I have said, in this universe, this is seen as the most precious. That is, this person has the intention to cultivate in his heart. He wants to return to the origin, go back to the truth. He wants to return towards goodness. 
People keep saying Buddha nature, Buddha nature. That's what they're referring to. Once it comes out, it shines like gold. It shakes the ten directional world. Everybody sees that this person wants to practice cultivation. His Buddha nature has come out. So people will help him unconditionally. What I said yesterday about healing illnesses is the same. If all you want is to get your illnesses cured here, if you're still an ordinary person wanting to recover from illnesses, but your illnesses. For an ordinary person, how can these miseries be casually eradicated for you? Didn't you yourself create them in the past? That's the principle. But when you want to cultivate, I can change it for you here, and that's the only way. If you yourself do not change yourself, if your human heart does not lean towards goodness, you want to just dust off your butt, leave it behind, and throw it all away. That won't do. So, when a person. Is in the process of cultivation practice, as I was just saying, within other dimensions, doesn't our body have forms of existence in those other dimensions? The objects in other dimensions, their forms of existence as compared to ours, the forms of existence of objects in different dimensions are also all different. So when a person is born, as I just said, his life already exists simultaneously in other dimensions. And although through hard work and effort he can change some minor aspects, he cannot change the major ones. But I'm telling everyone, this is not superstition. Why not? Because think about it, everyone. Our whole galaxy is rotating like a disk. The center of the galaxy. And the edge of the galaxy are very different in terms of the concept of time. Then this universe, it's so large, its center and its different places and its different levels. Are there huge time differences between them? Just to give an example, if you stand in the center. Is definitely different from standing at the edge. In the center, you'll find that time is running very quickly, and on the edge, you'll find that time is very slow. For example, let's say from the time that you're born, your body exists in various dimensions. In a certain dimension, as soon as you're born, your life has already ended because that dimension's time is very rapid. And in another dimension, your body has not yet been born. That is to say, it's caused by the time difference between the dimensions. So if you could break through the time difference, you would be able to see what that life of yours that has already ended was like. You could see how you existed in the different times and what you were doing. That whole state. Therefore, one can see the existence of one's whole life. In a specified dimension, you can see what you're doing. Then, in the subsequent dimension, you can see what you do next. Therefore, as time changes in different dimensions, one would be able to observe this point. Maybe you understand what I'm saying. This is caused by the time-space difference, so there is no superstition here. In a fast time space, your life has already finished. In a slow time space, you have not yet been born. But in the present dimension, you've already lived for this number of years. This is just to illustrate the meaning. So one can see one's past and one's future. With this power of penetrating through time spaces, one can see this. The power of knowing fates that we're talking about can break through this time difference and reflect it onto the screen at your forehead, and then it runs before your eyes like a movie. This supernormal power sees things quite precisely to the point where even the discrepancies in terms of the era or the time are very small. When you do fortune telling, no matter how you predict or how good you are with the Zhou Yi or Book of Changes, it still wouldn't work because you're merely deducing from a theory. While this supernormal power sees very precisely, this is the power of knowing fate that we're talking about. Uh, 
In the past, we these days people are talking about flying saucers and aliens. Now there are research institutes, both private and government sponsored, all are doing research in this area. Actually, I'm telling everyone, those things, their science is very developed. They have already broken through this physical time of ours. They can go through different time spaces. Time is definitely not the same in different time spaces. So they come as they please and go as they please. Maybe within one second they'll return to their place. Then maybe in another second they'll come back again. If they have taken a very rapid time space, as soon as they go there, they'll have arrived. Because that dimension cannot be measured with our present concept of distance. One cannot use that to delimit it. It's not delimited in this way. What may seem only one foot away could actually be as though it were a hundred thousand miles away, but it cannot actually exist in this way. It's not like that. Just now, while we were talking about Tianmu, the third eye, we incidentally discussed two supernormal powers. Now let's talk about an expression that exists in our Qigong community. There are two terms that a lot of people now, cultivation and Qigong communities, have always failed to explain clearly. But in the Qigong community, in the cultivation community, and in the past in the religious community, this expression has always existed. What is this expression? It is to transcend the three realms and go beyond the five elements. These words sound very mysterious. In the past, there were some Qigong masters, whether they were genuine or sham, who knows how they became Qigong masters. People would ask them and they would dare to talk about it. They just came up with some haphazard stuff, transcend the three realms and go beyond the five elements. So people who didn't believe in Qigong would ask them, which one of you has gone beyond the three realms? Which one of you is out of the five elements? So people nailed them, choked them off, they didn't know what to say. So if you don't know, don't randomly say things or else it will have the opposite effect and do damage. So now we'll explain this question to everyone because this is directly related to the issue of our cultivators cultivating to high levels. First, let's talk about being out of the five elements. Everyone knows that the ancient Chinese theory of the five elements states that metal, wood, water, fire, and earth form the five elements. From the viewpoint of modern physics, these elements of metal, wood, water, fire, and earth are also scientific. They're ancient Chinese physics, and it's believed that they're scientific. There is a book that compares and points out the correspondence between the five elements and the table of elements of modern chemistry. And it's really correct. For example, let's talk about metals. Be they gold, platinum, iron, lead, tin, copper, no matter which one you take, they're all metals, right? Once, just to give you an example, once the China Institute of Science wanted to experiment with me, they took a glass tube containing a very small, very thin strip of aluminum. The glass tube was fused shut, so of course you couldn't remove or substitute the contents. After they brought it out, the usual experiment would be to just add some energy to it and then they'd go back and measure the energy. These things have been done by everyone and the scientific community has known for a long time that Qigong masters have energy that ordinary people don't have. So I told them, this is what I'll do. I will scramble the order of its molecular arrangement. You know, the arrangement order of a metal is the most stable. If that's changed, then the surface metal will undergo a change. This hadn't been done before, so I shook it in my hand, and then it was taken away for analysis. Upon examination, it was found that the aluminum strip had changed, the surface metal had changed. One part had become iron, one part had become copper, one part had become silver, one part had become... Gold, and some had become other metal elements. That is to say, it was made up of a number of different metal elements. How could this happen? How could this happen? Because I zapped it. I scrambled its internal molecular arrangement, so this happened. 
That means, just now I gave an example to tell you that the five elements of metal, wood, water, fire, and earth are ancient Chinese physics, so they're scientific. Then according to the five element theory, metal, wood, water, fire, and earth compose a myriad of things of the universe. No living being and no physical body falls outside of these five elements. They are all composed of these substances. There is truth to this. It's very scientific. So now this sounds even more mystical. Why? Because think of it. If a person has gone beyond the five elements, that means he has gone beyond the physical world. This sounds, on the surface, this sounds very mystical. Actually, there's nothing mystical about it. Why? We'll tell you, just listen. It's sure to be scientific. We Qigo masters, people who have accomplishments in cultivation or monks in religions, monks with cultivation accomplishments, all have energy, all have gong. This has been recognized for a long time as a result of the experiments done over these past years. It has been recognized for a long time. Everything that can be detected now, infrared, ultraviolet, infrasonic waves, ultrasonic waves, neutrons, atoms, gamma rays, many trace elements, as long as there exists an instrument that can measure it, it will all be found within the energy emitted by Qigong masters. And moreover, they're present in considerable quantities. The higher the level of a Qigong master, the more of these substances he will emit. Why doesn't an ordinary person have them? This proves that Qigong masters have gong or cultivation energy. Under the effect of a special electromagnetic field, a Qigong master can emit a very strong aura, multicolored and very beautiful. Of course, an ordinary person also has an aura, but it's very small. If the Qigong master uses his mind intent to emit it more, it becomes even stronger. It's quite intense. That is to say, cultivators have gong. They have this high energy matter. So this gong, as I said, it's not like forming a dan or an energy cluster in the lower abdomen that we mentioned. As I said yesterday, dan is just a bomb. It's just a preparation for the day you complete your cultivation, or kai gong, at which point it will explode and release all of your supernormal powers and unblock your hundred energy channels. So that's all this dan is used for. It is not the entirety of the stored energy. It's just a part of it. A genuine system for cultivation of both mind and body involves going beyond the five elements. A system that does not cultivate both mind and body does not teach cultivation of binti or one's own body and bodies in other physical dimensions. So it doesn't teach going out of the five elements. It only cares about transcending the three realms. A system that cultivates both mind and body involves going beyond the five elements. It will transform binti. The body will leave the physical body, leave the physical environment. But actually this person still has to cultivate among ordinary people. So ordinary people cannot see the difference on the surface. But in this body, the energy is stored not only in the Dantian part. Where is it stored? Every cell of your body is storing up energy. Moreover, your molecules, protons, atoms, electrons, even going further downward, all the way to the extreme microscale, to the origin of matter, all are undergoing a change. It is said that practice of Gong changes the human body from the inside. All the molecular cells are undergoing this fundamental change. That is to say, all of them are accumulating energy. All of the microscopic cells of your whole body are accumulating energy. And since this energy is stored in your cells, it exists in the same formation as the cells of your body. Since this energy is stored in your cells, it exists in the same formation as the cells of your body. But you know, as your gong li, or energy potency, keeps rising, this high energy matter will become denser and denser. As its density becomes greater and greater, how will it change? It will, it's a high energy matter to begin with, beyond your normal cells. It will come to restrict all of your original cells and replace all of your original cells. Possibly you won't have any more metabolism. They will have been completely substantiated and replaced by this high energy matter, and the original cells will have been expelled. Even your cell nuclei will be replaced by it. Once you have reached this stage, think about it. Is your body still a body composed of the five elements? It is composed of extremely abundant matter collected from other dimensions, quintessential things refined through practice. Is your body still a body made up of those five elements? Not anymore. It has already undergone a fundamental change. So think about it, haven't you gone beyond the five elements?
This kind of body will not naturally age or wear out. It will remain forever young. Of course, it's easy to say, but one has to go through a round of arduous cultivation to reach this stage. However, this person still has to continue cultivation among ordinary people, so it must not be that on the surface ordinary people can see that he's different from others. If people see that he's like a deity, no one can touch him. He exists like light, and nobody would be able to. Everybody would worship him like a god. Nobody would make conflicts for him. And without this environment of conflict, where is he going to raise his xing xing? So he wouldn't be able to elevate himself further. Thus, he has to continue to be the same as ordinary people to the greatest extent possible. Thus, ordinary people cannot see it, but practitioners can see it. People with attainments and cultivation can see it because he has already undergone a fundamental change. Nonetheless, if you cut this kind of body with a knife, it may bleed, or if it's hit by a car, its bones may fracture. Why? Because the molecular composition of all the cells of the human body has been fully replaced by high energy matter, but the molecular arrangement, the structure and shape inside, have not undergone a change. So blood is still composed of those extremely tiny molecules. Thus, it is in the liquid state. Bones are hard and flesh is soft. The molecular arrangement inside is just like that. That is to say, the way the molecules are arranged has not changed. So on the surface, he looks the same as an ordinary person, and you cannot see the difference. But basically, he has already undergone a fundamental change. He has only a layer of skin left to go. After this shell is cast away, this person will be, he'll be fundamentally different. When this stage is reached, it will be the cultivation of the beyond triple world fa, the cultivation of the arhat fa, also called the cultivation of the Buddha body. Is this kind of a body still an ordinary person's flesh body? Hasn't he gone beyond the five elements? You know, we were just saying that energy exists in the body of a qigong master. Gong exists there, high energy matter. This high energy matter exists in every cell. Of course, gradually he will replace those cells. As he substantiates them more and more, wouldn't it have this kind of effect? Once it's been explained, isn't this all scientific? Where is there any coloring of superstition here? Some things cannot yet be understood, but some things aren't absolutely beyond understanding at this point. Some things have already been discovered in some frontier sciences, but just haven't been publicized in society. But already the things that people in the world of science have already learned are enough to change our present-day textbooks. But since the present society has been deeply influenced by traditional education, it's very hard for people to accept it. Even in the face of objective reality, people don't dare to admit it. Just now I talked about going beyond the five elements. Now let me talk about transcending the three realms. What does it mean to transcend the three realms? Actually, this transcending the three realms sounds even more mystical. First, let us say that in our lecture we cannot break away from the historical origin of this term. This is not a term created in our modern world of cultivation or in Qigong. It was passed down from the ancient world of cultivation and religions. So what do these three realms taught in the religious community refer to? You know, the religion of Taoism teaches that there are nine principal levels of heaven, and the Buddhist school teaches that there are 33 levels of heaven. No matter how many levels of heaven you say there are, Actually, the nine principal levels of heaven and the 33 levels of heaven that they talk about are in fact the same thing because there are small ones within the large ones. Actually, now it's even more complex. It's gotten all messed up. This structure has a certain boundary. That is, they believe that the three realms, however many heavens there may be, do after all have a limit. Outside this limit, you're beyond the three realms. Inside this limit, you're within the three realms. So why do they call what's within this dimension the three realms? The heavens, the human world, and the underworld compose the doctrine of the three realms. All the living beings within the three realms have to undergo reincarnation. It's just that at the higher levels, the reincarnation time is longer, maybe once in 500 years. Of course, that's what religions teach. And in the human world, it can only be once every 100 years, and below, it's probably even less. Just to illustrate this meeting, that's what religions teach about the three realms. So we've said that today, we cannot talk about it separate from its historical background. 
But since there is this division of the three realms, there is a matter of cultivation level. Actually, going beyond the three realms is just a matter of cultivation level. You know, yesterday I talked about an issue, namely that we'll have a column of gong on top of the head as your gong li, or energy potency, keeps rising, and your cultivation level keeps rising, this gong column on top of the head will become taller and taller. A few years ago, many Qigong masters emerged. In the beginning, they were brought up by their masters in solitary cultivation, secret cultivation, or in situations unknown to others. They didn't have contact with the ordinary people's environment. Under those conditions, they cultivated rather well. And their levels were also very high. So I've seen some of the Chico masters who came out in those years. Their gong columns had already gone beyond the extent of our galaxy. They were quite high. Some people's gong columns had reached even higher and had gone beyond even more remote galaxies which shows that their gong was very high, their levels were very high. But once a person comes into contact with ordinary human society, it's very hard for him to not be affected by the ordinary human temptations of fame and self-interest. So a large group of Qigong masters has already fallen, and they have nothing left. They have no gong. They have completely fallen into fame and self-interest. They were completely ruined by fame and self-interest. They seek money, they seek self-interest, they harm others, they match powers against one another. They do all kinds of messed up things now, and cause serious damage to the condition of our qi gong, so they have no gong left. Because the gong is as high as the xin xin. This is absolute because it's cultivated according to your heart. If your xin xin falls, your gong also falls, and your level also falls, and all your bodily transformations and other changes also reverse and degenerate. This is absolute. So I'm just saying that as your level increases, so does your gong column. The three realms that they spoke of, we examined from the standpoint and framework of modern physics. And we discovered that the three realms that religion spoke of in the past was merely within the range of our nine principal planets. Some people say that there are ten principal planets. That's, I say that's... I'd say this is, that doesn't exist. Let's not say anything bad. Let's just say that that doesn't exist. There are no ten principal planets. There are just nine principal planets. So what they spoke of is just something within the range of the nine principal planets. Then, we said, beyond this range, if the gong column that you've developed through a cultivation practice is beyond that range, haven't you gone beyond this limit of the three realms? According to religion, once you've reached the fruit status or attainment status or guo wei, wouldn't that be your place in the future? Won't you go there in the future? Didn't you cultivate your way there? Didn't you leap beyond the three realms? So you'll no longer be subject to the suffering of reincarnation within the three realms. That's what religion says. So isn't it really a matter of the fruit status and the level of your cultivation? It's simply a matter of the height of one's level. Among our Falun Gong disciples, there really are some who've cultivated quite well and whose levels are very high. So just now I talked about transcending the three realms and going beyond the five elements. That's all we'll say for this issue. Next, let's talk about the mentality of pursuit. I had to take care of some things in the northeast back in my hometown, so I spent more than three months at home, and I was also interested in seeing how Falun Gong would develop when I wasn't around. And throughout the country, some people did very well, and some people did very poorly. Even some people in charge did very poorly. 
Of course, some of them had not yet listened to the lectures. In some areas, some people spontaneously organized these. They had heard the lectures once, hadn't understood them, yet organized an assistance center and made it. We're just saying that there are some people whose purpose in studying the Gong is really impure. For true cultivation, you have to purify your heart. In the past, it was said, "What was it to cultivate your body?" You must make your mind sincere. You must put right your thinking. If you come to obtain the fa or the mentality of pursuit, you're not going to get anything. Pursuit itself is an attachment. I'm telling everyone a truth. The purpose of your cultivation practice is precisely to eliminate all kinds of those attachments of yours, all the attachments that you cannot give up among ordinary people. You pursue. People. Why can people make up human society? Why can they make up this special dimension? Because in man, there exists qing or sentiment. It too is manifested in this dafa of zhen shan ren at this last stage. There is the existence of qing. What you like, what you enjoy, your relatives and friends, romantic love, affection between father and son, affection between siblings. What you like to eat, what you don't like to eat, what job you like. You want to get famous, you don't want to get famous. How you show off the fame and self-interest. All of your attachments originate from this qing or sentiments. Your joy, anger, sorrow, and delight are all this qing. Man lives his whole life just for this qing. I'm telling everyone, as a person who truly practices cultivation, when you reach a very high level, you have to discard this qing of yours. This qing can reveal many, many attachments. Because of this qing. People pursue fame, pursue self-interest. Even when they're very old, they're still pursuing fame and self-interest, pursuing money and social status. There are also those who pursue other things. There are those who live just for proving their point. That's also for Qing. I'm just saying that all these are the things that human beings are attached to. That it's very easy to bring these ordinary human concepts into cultivation practice. When you first begin to practice cultivation, you're completely unable to detect them. They've already formed into fixed ideas in your consciousness. You're completely unable to detect their existence. When you do those bad things, you still think that's just the way it is. You don't think much of it, but it has already formed a fundamental concept in yourself. It's as though you. You now are this kind of person. So some attachments have already become imperceptible. Our cultivation practice is to get rid of various human attachments, eliminate those kinds of attachments of yours. Only then can you truly succeed in cultivation practice. Because as I was just saying, everything that exists for humans is reversed. What you think is good is thought to be bad up there. What you think is good, as seen in another fa, is all not good. There is this kind of relationship. That's only in this way can you let go of these attachments. Here's an example. Say you haven't let go of attachments. How rough that would be. Your xingxing hasn't been raised up, and yet you're brought up there and allowed to succeed in cultivation. You go up there, you take one look. And you see how beautiful a great bodhisattva is. You can't help yourself and have some wicked thoughts. Maybe you had some wicked thoughts, or you see so many treasures, or how great somebody else's abilities are. How come I can't do that? You can't stop your jealousy from rising up, and you start a conflict with them. Can such a phenomenon be allowed to exist in that realm? That is to say, if you want to raise yourself to that stage, you must purify your heart and pay attention to the cultivation of your xingxing or mind nature before you can ascend. However. How many attachments you have given up is how much cleaner your heart is. However much your person has been cleansed, that's how high you can ascend. Yesterday I said that gong is developed through cultivation, not by practice. Practice is just the change in the binti. This system of ours teaches cultivation of both mind and body with changes in the binti. So we talk about gong. In Sakyamuni school, they didn't. During his years, he did not teach the changing of the binti. He only taught nirvana. He didn't even want the body. So he only taught cultivation and didn't teach practice. 
Some people attend the seminar seeking supernormal powers. The largest proportion of people have come for healing. Even though such a person doesn't talk about his illness, in his mind he cannot let go of it because his illness is very serious. Some people even hold on to me so I'll treat their illnesses. Some people write me letters and mention their illnesses again and again. In every word and between the lines, it's all about their illness. If you cannot give these things up, there's nothing we can do. We believe that people don't have illness. It's just that it's caused by the existence of karma, or yearly, because we've discovered that when physicists now use a microscope to observe germs, viruses or bacteria, viruses are somewhat smaller than bacteria, they all exist as two different kinds of karma. When they're manifested in this dimension of ours, their physical form of existence is germs, but in other dimensions their form of existence is karma. In this present dimension, you use medicine to kill it, but I'm telling everyone, in that other dimension, it hasn't died. Its root still exists. It will re-emerge and there will be a relapse of the illness. If you don't get the illness now, you'll get it later. Moreover, this karma can be transformed so that if you don't meet with this tribulation, you'll meet with another one. I mentioned it earlier, didn't I just say that these things don't exist by accident? Many of us have done bad things before, so it's accumulated and passed down and carried on. And it's not just from this one lifetime of yours, not from one period of history. A lot of our practitioners think, why is it that I feel uncomfortable when I practice Gong? Somebody wrote to ask me, teacher, why is it that whenever I start to practice I feel discomfort? I can't practice anymore. So you sit on the couch drinking tea and watching TV and your Gong is just shooting up? Where is there such a thing? This debt that you've incurred, you don't pay it back? I'll give you an example. Suppose this person wants to go abroad. The living conditions are better in another country, so he's going to enjoy the good life. But you borrowed a lot of money in China and you haven't paid those people back. They won't let you leave, right? You haven't paid back my money, yet you leave, could that do? Don't you have to repay this debt before you can go? Just giving an example, an ordinary person's example, to illustrate this point. So in practice of Gong, one has to bear hardship. If you come to obtain the Fa, harboring various pursuits in your heart, you won't get anything. Whether you want to get healed, to seek supernormal powers, or you even want to hear some theories, then go back and damage our Dafa, change it around, and make up some things of your own to make money. I'm telling you, don't ever do it. You may just... Damaging Dafa is not... It's something that will cost a man his life. There are too many such examples. If I tell you you may get scared, so we won't talk about these things. That is to say, any kind of pursuit in your heart will make you unable to attain the effect. Cultivation practice in and of itself aims at eliminating those attachments. If you come in harboring attachments, you won't have anything, only wholeheartedly, because to cultivate is to cultivate one's heart. In the past, monks used to say that Buddha is in one's heart, Buddha is in your heart, and you have to direct your cultivation inward. So some monks became confused, and an old monk said, Buddha is in your heart, cultivate inward. So he misunderstood it as, there is no Buddha outside, Buddha is in your heart, so you are the Buddha. That's how he understood it. You are not a Buddha. The meaning of what they told you is that you have to cultivate your heart if you are to gain the right fruit, or zhengguo, or righteous status. The principle is very simple. Let's say, some of our fallen disciples know that cultivation practice must be exclusive. Truly cultivating to high levels requires dedication to a single way. On the low levels, if you borrow everyone's strong points, that's not wrong. What's wrong with it if your goal is healing and fitness and you use whatever methods to remove your illness? So on that level, on the level of qigong, it's not wrong. Selecting everyone's strong points isn't wrong. But in true cultivation practice, when you're being raised upwards, then it's important to be dedicated to a single way, cultivating no second way. In the temples, monks also teach no second way. Goodness, you're done with this system, so you want to study that system too? Then I say, that's all messed up and you won't have anything. In the temples, they don't teach. Nowadays, things in the temples have already gotten messed up. Those of the Zen sect are studying the scriptures of Buddha Amitabha. The Pure Land cultivators are reading the scriptures of Tantrism. 
You know, in the past, cultivation practice was a very serious matter. You could only cultivate in one way, and this way was under the dominion of one enlightened being, one Tathagata. Although he didn't tell you about his method of cultivation and forms of his evolution of Gong, having only told you how to cultivate your heart and wanting you to act according to the scriptures to cultivate your heart, the evolution of his Gong was also extremely complex. And that Gong was something he did for you. If you put your feet in two boats or in several boats, when you have only one body, the enlightened being had one way to save you and had planted things in you, but you wanted both this one and that one. How could it be done for you? Wouldn't it have been messed up? One can only cultivate by being dedicated to a single way. The enlightened being looks at you and says, This person, Xing Xing, is not good. He wants this and he wants that too. You would have totally messed things up. If those beings above had poor Xing Xing, they would get into a conflict or start a fight over you. You can't touch those things of mine. I'm giving him this. I'm saving him like this. I'm saving him like that. You only have one body. Wouldn't there be a fight? But their Xing Xing is good. None of them will deal with you. They're not going to start a fight. It's a problem of your Xing Xing being poor. And some people also pursue some small skills and petty arts. They look at what special ability some people have, how someone's true spirit can do whatever, how someone else is capable of such and such. They're all small skills and petty arts. They're nothing. They can't let you gain the right fruit or zheng guo. Only a righteous way or zheng fa can allow you to gain the right fruit. It is said that in the Dharma ending period, goblins, demons, ghosts and monsters have emerged. That's what Sakyamuni said. That's what religions say. They bring chaos everywhere to human society. Actually, the Dharma ending period that Sakyamuni spoke of is precisely now. It has already come to the Kalpa ending period of the Dharma ending period. I'm telling everyone, where in human society is there a land of purity? Think about it. Conflicts between people have already become so acute. Where is the land of purity? Even the normal life of human beings is being disturbed and damaged by some people. There is no land of purity. Of course, conversely, I say, our Falun Gong is a land of purity. I dare to say that. Our students, after they've completed the class, their Xingxing will have been raised to very high levels. Everybody is studying the Fa, acting according to the Fa, and making requirements for themselves according to the Fa. There are a lot of such examples in the real world. At work, they present themselves very well because you have to be a good person. As a cultivator, you have to be a good person under all circumstances. At work, you're very diligent. You do good things for others and seek no reward and leave no name. When others harm you, you won't quarrel with them. I say, there are very few people like that now. But in our Falun Gong, there are plenty. It's a common phenomenon. So I dare say we are a land of purity. Then there are some people to whom supernormal powers are very important. Supernormal powers don't determine one's level of cultivation. They're just a byproduct of one's cultivation practice, and everyone has them. But without the raising of one's level, without being strengthened by the energy that comes from the rise in Xin Xin and in one's level, nothing will work. Even if you have a supernormal power, it's as good as not having it. So the crucial part is the gong that is developed through cultivation practice, and that determines your level. That gong that is cultivated is produced by the rise in xing xing. So to judge a person as good or bad, or to judge one's cultivation level, one should look at xing xing, the height of xing xing. I say this is the sole criterion by which people's levels are divided. Of course, from the viewpoint of supernormal powers, we can also see the height of one's level. I can talk about that in later lectures. Since time is limited, I cannot talk more about it. Do not ever use supernormal powers to determine people's levels. Both in Beijing and Changchun, we had such people appear. As he continued to practice... He ceased to respect anyone. He started to think, the level of my Tianmu is so high and I've been able to learn Falun Gong, so I must not be an average person, right? Among these Falun Gong students, my Tianmu is open the best. 
and better than all of them. Later on, this attachment, in fact, it was his own attachment that surfaced. Once this attachment arises, it's very serious. It can grow. He became very pleased with himself, and even looked down on others. And other attachments arose too. Then it developed to the point where he said, "I'm so capable. Maybe I'm no average person." And finally, he ceased to respect me too. He said, "Learn from me. I am the Buddha. Don't learn from Li Hongzhi." Two such people appeared in Beijing and in Changchun. That's the reason behind it all. They could see with their tian mu. Once a person becomes this way, it's all over. He will fall straight to the bottom. Fall straight to the bottom. Just talking nonsense. Next, I have to talk to everyone about an issue. Yesterday, a very small number of people, a very few with extremely poor health, already began to have some reactions, and the reactions were a bit strong. One group felt that their bodies were very comfortable on the way home. New students and some veteran students who haven't really been complying with the requirements of Falun Gong will have a very strong reaction in their bodies starting today. Many people will have this reaction because in these first four days we have to purify your bodies, so it comes on rather violently. Because in the remaining time we need to adjust your body, align your body, and finally also have some people develop gong. Since the seminar is only ten classes or eight days long, it comes on rather violently. In the past we had seven-day seminars, but when some people's illnesses were eliminated too violently, they tend to faint. So I don't hold seven-day seminars. Anymore, the minimum is eight days. We try to be considerate of the people from out of town who come here, traveling thousands of miles. The expense is quite high. Food and lodging are a burden for them. We try to shorten the time, but it can't be shortened anymore. It can only be shortened to eight days. So the reaction comes on very intensely. A ten-day seminar is the most stable. For some people, let me tell everyone and declare in advance: you may feel your head ache, your brain ache, or part of your body that used to have an illness will hurt again. It will become. Uncomfortable again. You will feel sick and dizzy, or even collapse, as if from a serious illness or a serious flu. There could be all kinds of conditions. Not everyone will have every kind of condition. Some people may have this condition. Some other people may have that condition. Some people who have illness all over will feel that their whole body is chilly, as if they've fallen ill. As I said yesterday, today we've completely removed the roots of the illnesses in your body. After the roots of the illnesses are removed, there still remains a field. This field is suitable for the substance of the illness to exist. So this field has to be dispersed. After it's dispersed, it will come out of your body. Actually, we could clear out this field for you too, but it cannot be cleaned up this way. Why not? Today we've already done a lot for you. If you don't endure any of that field yourself. And if we were to make it all go away for you, it also wouldn't conform to the principle of the universe. Thus, you have to endure some of it. So there may be different reactions. You may have discomfort here or there. But I'm telling you, this is not an illness. This is a good reaction. Things that reach an extreme must turn around. When you feel the most discomfort, it has probably already started to go away. There are some people who are exceptions. Some people are critically ill, very seriously ill, but they didn't tell us and enrolled in the class. These people are exceptions. If you have a bad reaction, then go to the hospital without delay. We can only do this for cultivators. If I did this for you, I would be committing a wrongdoing. I would be violating a great principle of the universe. Even I would be punished. We've already opened the door very wide. We're doing such a great large-scale thing; it must not be undermined. So people may have different reactions. Some people may have diarrhea as well as vomiting. Some people in other regions told me. Teacher, all the way back home, I kept looking for toilets, running from one toilet to the next. I could hardly pull my pants up. 
Why? Especially here in the South, in some regions, we have people who eat everything, raw, live, everything. So all the entities accumulate in the stomach and intestines, and other bad things are already quite numerous. All of which have to be cleaned out for you. So there may be these kinds of reactions. There are fewer such reactions in the north and more in the south. Since your internal organs have to be cleansed for you, you may feel it. Some people only have diarrhea, no vomiting. Some people only have vomiting, no diarrhea. There can be various reactions. Some people's stool will even be black or bloody and have things like pus. What some people vomit out is like that. There can be all kinds of reactions, but. They're all good. Then there are some people who sleep, and when I finish talking, they wake up. Why do they sleep? Because the human brain is the most sensitive. If we worked on it, you wouldn't be able to endure it. Some people have a brain condition, and it could be a serious one. We have to fix it up for you. To work on your brain, we have to make you fall asleep, put you under anesthesia. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to endure it. But some people's sense of hearing, their hearing part, has no problem. So although they slept very soundly, they didn't miss a single word. They heard and took in everything. But whatever I say, in every seminar, there are people who latch on to me to heal their illnesses. Some people, when I pass in front of them, they even collapse over there and won't get up. Oh, the expression on their faces is really agonized, meaning, come on, fix me up. I'm telling you, if I didn't fix you up, later on, you could have major illnesses and you wouldn't be able to stand up for many years or you could lose your life. Today we have reduced to such an extent for you, we cannot fix you up anymore. Everyone has different amounts of karma. However, we have pointed out that for critically ill people, if you feel bad, go to the hospital without delay. That's all for today's lecture.